Well, many people turn to religion to help them cope in the days after the 9-11 attacks, and some even chose new faiths, including Islam. That may be no surprise, since a quarter of the estimated 6 million Muslims in the United States are converts. Delia Gallagher looks at two people who chose that path. Alison Poole says this phrase three times in Arabic and then in English. There is no God but God. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. And her conversion ceremony is complete. She's now a Muslim. Moments later, she'll marry Sammy and become Alison El Gamal. But Allison, who was raised a Southern Baptist in North Carolina, says faith, not marriage, made her want to become a Muslim. I think for a long time I've been looking for something. I've, there, there's been like a piece missing. Always one little thing that maybe wasn't right. At a ceremony marking the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, she explained why Islam appeals to her. I think because it's much more about peace. I'm praying five times a day. It's kind of hard to go out and say bad things or do bad things when you're praying five times a day. You have to believe. The imam who married Allison says he's seen more American converts recently, in part because of the prominence of Islam in the news. It may sound paradoxical, but what happens is that when something becomes more in the news, people tend to want to know about it. Allison says she was already on a spiritual quest when she began to hear a lot about Islam post 9-11. Barbara Cardebuke, another recent Muslim convert, says 9-11 also played a part in her conversion. After 9-11, I thought this is the time when people really have to start looking for real answers to get away from everybody fighting back and more. You have to start looking towards God. Barbara says through Islam, she found a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God she was unable to find as a Roman Catholic. I always felt when you go to church, you're praying to Jesus or you're doing Hail Marys. You, you know, I used to think, well, where's God? She says her family has been mostly supportive of her conversion. Allison says her family is completely behind her decision, but occasionally she's reminded that not everyone is. I was walking around down near the World Trade Center, and this woman walked by, and she said, I want to just go bomb those Muslim bastards. And I heard her say it, and it just, it really struck me. Because I was like, you know what, you know, that, that's me. You know, this is something that's, that's brought me a peace that I've never known. And, and it's still so misunderstood. It's a choice she's proud of and says she'll keep for life. Amy. Delia Gallagher, CNN. Sisters, it's so nice to be here in your beautiful mosque uh, with Alhamra Palace behind us. Mm -hmm. Can you all uh, introduce yourselves, please? I'm Munira Mendoza, Fauzia mm -hmm. Benedetti, Suleyha Singhli, I'm Iman uh, Travieso, and Hannah Whiteman. I'm a, I'm no I, okay, I was born and raised in California. Um, um, I was born in Switzerland, I've lived in England. Uh, born and raised in Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> I was born in Spain. <laughs> and I was born in England. And uh, what yeah. attracted you to Spain? It's enchanting, it has something about it, you know. It has a pull because, you know, we're Muslims, we have, um, of course this is a, a, like a heritage that, that we can't, I don't think we're, we can create nowadays. Um, it's fantastic, you know, it's beautiful, it's like the kind of the height of the Muslim uh, uh, reign here in Europe. Because I also live among lots of Muslim women and Muslim, and they have their mothers and they study and they travel and they work and they. I find it also now easy to talk to about, about my religion. Now I live here, among people who are the same as me, lots of Muslim friends and Muslim acquaintances, and it's easier now to be able to reach out to people because I feel more confident about it. Now, what is the role that women play in the mosque and in the community? I mean, without women, they wouldn't be a community. They'd just be an yeah. army. Yeah. The men are into politics, but the women are doing the real stuff, the real, the real, the real work at home. And there's a great warmth between the sisters because when we said our prayers yesterday in the mosque, everybody turned to each other and they kissed each other. Like the Spanish. Yeah, they <laughs> kissed each other. It's very Mediterranean. Is, is that Spanish? I think when feels family, no? Um, here. It, no, it helps. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it's the Spanish. Uh, 
have it to between women to to kiss each other. Right? Or is it la convivencia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it's still left that kind of mm -hmm. uh, essence in a, in a way. I think you know. You lo you know, it's like in any small village. Mm -hmm. We are like a village inside uh, Granada. Mm -hmm. uh, so the convivence is is uh, uh, sometimes we we love each other. Sometimes we fight. <laughs> <laughs> Like in every human group, <laughs> we are di we are different uh, personalities, different backgrounds. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we are in the same place because we are Muslim. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and after 30 years, you love the people who are, are around you. <laughs> Have you converted to Islam, or were you born into Islam? What's what's your story? I converted. I'm one of the. Well, I was born because my parents converted. Um, my parents are Malaysian origin, so my great grandparents are Muslim, and I'm Muslim too. Mm -hmm. I was converted to Islam, yeah, 30 few years ago. Because at that moment, there were very, very few Muslims in, yes. in Spain. Yes. It was like something very strange. Many years, many people. Uh, tell me that uh, I speak very well Spanish and when I try to say yes I am Spanish I am from Valladolid the, okay. the place where they uh, speak the best Spanish you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the people don't, don't understand no now it's hard to know that there, there are many Spanish Muslims you know but uh, before was something impossible as a Muslim I feel sometimes foreigner in Spain and, Foreigner uh, among the Muslims. <laughs> Are there many converts to Islam? Yes, I think, and in the in the last years, uh, the, uh, here in the in the most every week uh, is people who converted mm -hmm. every week. But the government uh, in in Spain, uh, they say they tried to make that uh, uh, convivence between different communities. What, but uh, uh, when you hear the news in the in the uh, TV or in the you read in the newspaper about Muslim is all all negative, all about uh, terrorism and things like this. So that made it difficult, you know. But uh, I can say that uh, at the beginning of living here in Granada, the the people of the city, they were very uh, unconfident, you know, with with, they with us. Because they couldn't yeah. stand it. Thirty years back, they wouldn't they, they wouldn't let us if we wore a scarf. They wouldn't rent houses. There used to be, uh, the, I have had rocks thrown at me. Um, there were writings on the wall. Uh, there's a very distinctive word, which is called mordo in Spanish, saying like, mordos go home. And uh, they couldn't stand it. They were, they were terrified. They thought we were going to take over the Albaicin. They thought we were going to take over Granada. I think um, a, f a huge fear factor has been created here. And it's still there. You know, my, my brother grew up in Spain and uh, he, he, the, the, the history book started at 1492, the fall of Granada. I want to ask one more question about the hijab. Yeah. <laughs> you have to bring it up. Is this like the token question? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have to bring it up. <laughs> Sorry, I'll forgive you. <laughs> so, um, uh, what are your comments? That the, the hijab came for the Muslim women to be respected. So uh, this is the mission of the of mm. the hijab. So in the moment uh, that uh, suppose any other thing, you can. This is up, up to to you the situation uh, where you live, you know. And when we wear the hijab, we are always making a political statement. And I sometimes don't have the strength. To, I don't feel strong enough to make that political statement. I just want to go across the street and buy the bread. Hijab is a very sort of personal thing at the moment because as. Monira says you like making a statement, especially in this era. Um, if it's going to be a problem, and if it's going to bring you problems, the, the most important thing is to dress modestly, because there's a lot of people that walk around in hijab. And then the most important so, is the intention. And the yeah. intention. So, you know, it's a bit of a balance thing. Well, I started wearing a scarf when I was 18, 19, and I really felt it. And I, I felt empowered and strong and I came to Spain and I all, all fell apart. <laughs> it really did. I had some terrible comments about, with my older, older generation, Spanish older generation in Cordoba. And I remember feeling so awful and thinking this is completely 
this is the opposite of what I wanted, you know. It's, it, it makes them feel bad. It makes them reminds them of something that they obviously don't understand. And, and I stopped wearing it and I don't wear a scarf on a daily basis. Some people oh, say okay. that European identity and Islamic identity are incompatible. Yeah. I disagree. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? We're uh, European Muslim. We, I mean, for me, Islam is like a falter, you know. It's a way to filter in the good of bad, to, to filter in the good and to keep out the bad. Of each and they are, society and I mean, culture. in every society there are good and bad things, mm -hmm. you know, and Islam is just the filter of the good and the bad. Yeah. And I think the term is European Muslims, not Muslims in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Right? We, it's we like we are European and we are, we're Muslims yeah. and we're European, but we're not Muslims in Europe. We're European Muslims.